Glass morphism is one of my favorite trends of 2020. We're going to be looking at how to implement it inside of Editor X. Let's just get started. So here we have a brand new page inside of Editor X. I'm going to do a couple of things to prep this page to enter in our glass morphism. The first is we want an image in the background so that we can see how it's being applied. Now for images like this, it's useful to have gradients. So I'm just going to find a nice simple gradient that we can utilize to showcase this glass morphism. And uh, I think maybe something like this one over here should do nicely. We've got a bit of colors as well as different uh, subtle effects happening. So all of that should make a good section here for our glass morphism. Now, the next thing we need to do is add a container. This is something that we want to place at the item which will be creating the glass morphism in very shortly. Now for this container, we don't want it to have any background. So I'm going to set its opacity to zero here and it's currently invisible. Now the final thing that we need is to add in an iframe. Now I've placed the iframe inside of the container and what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it and expand it out to utilize the full room of this. And this iframe is useful because in here we can enter in our own code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank div in here. And this div is essentially going to be the element creating our glass morphism. Let's actually test this out. We'll click update. And when we do, we can see the test here is in with our code. Now, what I want to do next is add in some custom styling. Now, this is the essence of creating glass morphism. Some of these custom stylings aren't available in the inspector menu on the right hand side. So this is where by entering our own code in manually, we can apply these ourselves. So let's actually put a style here. And for the style, what I'm thinking is let's start defining, first of all, our background. So our background, I'm going to use RGBA and we're going to set a color of white. White is a great color for glass morphism because it does represent that sort of a glassy look. But when you do apply it, you don't want to utilize its full opacity. This last value here is opacity. So here I'm just going to pass in 0.35 and that's about 35% opacity of this white color. We can actually hit update now and immediately see that it's being applied to this div but it's not being applied to the whole section. So then the next thing we need to do is update the position. Now I'm going to do the position here to absolute, and then I'm going to set the values of top to zero, bottom to zero, left to zero and right to zero. When I update this, this will actually get that div to utilize the whole space of the iframe. And now we have a slightly white opacity background. It's not quite glass morphism, but we're slowly getting there. Now let's add one more thing in, which is a border radius. Now I think this just gives it a nice subtle effect. So I'm just going to do a 15 pixel border radius and you'll see the borders are nice and curved here around this element, which is what I'm going for, especially if we're going to do like a sheet of glass. Now the best part, the actual aspect that causes this frosted look. And it's a special value, uh, sorry, it's a special property called backdrop dash filter. And when we apply this, we want to add in a blur. The blur I'm going to apply will be just subtle, five pixels. But let's hit apply on that and see what we get. And immediately we get this frosted look. This looks awesome. It's the glass morphism I was talking about. There are a few things that we can do to make this look even better. So let's have a look at those. On top of this glass look, we can add a bit of a maybe background shadow. So let's put in box shadow. Uh, and for the box shadow here, what I'm thinking is maybe something like zero pixels, four pixels, 30 pixels. And we'll do RGBA once more. And we'll do black. So that's zero, 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 zero. And we'll do it at 10%, which isn't much. But it's just this nice effect that we should be seeing at the bottom corners of it. Now let's make sure that that applied. So we are applying it. But what's actually happening here from what I can see is that because of the fact that we are using the absolute position here, uh, it's being clipped by the boundary of the container. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this back to 25%, but I'm going to also create a margin of 30 pixels. 
and this will margin out from the ends and we can see now we've got that background shadow being applied to that box. It just makes it feel like it's lifting off the page which makes it look much better. Now let's add in another thing. We'll add in a border and this is going to be a border that is going to almost surround the outside of our glass to feel like it has frosted edges. So let's put in a solid RGBA color here of white once more, and this will be a little bit harsher. So I'll do this at maybe 58% and we'll hit apply on that. And now we can see this sort of a white outline on this glass morphism. Now I think that looks really good, especially for an example like this. We can literally copy paste this and apply another one on top. And now we're starting to get this effect where we're seeing glass on top of glass. And I always think that looks really cool. So this is a quick example of how you could create glass morphism. Of course, if you wanted to go even more custom, if you want to, for example, edit how harsh some of these colors are, you can always play around with these values. Like for example, this one above, I could make it a light lighter version of the glass morphism, whereas the one below it is a harsher version of that. And you can see what these effects look like. If you wanted to add content then later on inside of here that works a little bit better, like I'll add in the word glass morphism in here, um, we can update some of the styling here manually. So we'll do font size, uh, let's say 48 pixels, uh, color white, and we'll do display flex. Uh, and then we'll do align items center. And on top of that, we'll do uh, justify content uh, center. I think that should make it all centered. There we go. Beautiful. And here is our glass morphism. Now, I know that this is more code and less no code than usual, but some of the advanced things that you'll be doing inside of any program or any applications will require you to understand some coding. And if you want to have a look at how to create your own glass morphism, there are some great websites around that. Like for example, this one over here called css.glass, which gives you examples of glass morphism and then the CSS properties that you can use to apply them then you can literally copy paste them into your own code for Editor X here and start using them immediately. The final thing I wanted to let you guys know is that we've designed these in such a way as to allow them to be moved about or resized and rebuilt in any place and still be usable inside of the page, which makes it really cool. If for example, you wanted to copy them at any point in time, you literally press Control C, Control V and you get another element just like it. And this element you can move into place anywhere. Now let's actually copy this one here we have at the bottom left and let's make a little small container that we can maybe put at the very top of the page here overlapping this uh, main one. And this gives you an example of how flexible glass morphism is, as well as the cool looks and designs you can have with it. If, for example, you wanted to add in pictures inside, you can just grab them traditionally and just place them wherever you like. But it's really up to you to play around with this design aesthetic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on glass morphism inside of Editor X. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.